Hello there, my name is Jay. In this live class, I'm going to be your IELTS examiner. What we're going to do is this. We're going to do a full test simulation for IELTS speaking. I'm not an IELTS examiner, but I have actually taken the IELTS before and I did get a nine in IELTS speaking, which whoopee do, I'm a native speaker. It's not that fantastic. However, while I was taking this test, I had a lot of insight into how you can get a high band score. That's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to test you. I'm also going to show you, see, not secret strategies. They're not secret. They're not secret at all. Uh, they're available and they're good. They're powerful. We created them here at e2language.com. So let's get started thinking about this. Just a quick overview of IELTS speaking. Well, Cambridge University or the IELTS say that it's called interview, long term and discussion, but this is a poor choice of words. Really what you're doing on test day is this. Part one, you will small talk. Part two, you're going to tell three stories using a super strategy. Part three, you're going to discuss big ideas. This is a better way to look at how to do IELTS speaking. First of all, I want to talk to you about meeting the examiner because, well, let's face it, IELTS speaking is scary. It's terrifying. Even when I did IELTS speaking, I had nothing to lose. I was just doing it for the experience of taking the test. And yet I became really nervous. So let's think about this and let's think about our nervousness because it's important. First of all, you have to understand that you can't beg. Don't beg. Don't beg. Even if you desperately need that 6.5 or that 8, the IELTS examiner has a set of rules and he or she can't bend those rules for you. So just what you need to do is you need to have integrity. You need to have integrity, which means you need to be strong. You need to be confident. And you also need to bring your passport, by the way. The IELTS examiner... He or she. First of all, they meet you. You're going to walk down a corridor, sit in a classroom. The IELTS examiner will ask you a very simple question: What is your full name? And this, I don't think, is actually graded. They just ask you for details. And they'll ask also ask you, "Can I please see your ID?" So that's fine. You hand over your passport, passport, and away you go. Just give me one second. I've need. To, I've just realised I don't have my drawing tool. I need my drawing tool. Where's my drawing tool? Applications. Ah, yes, I need this thing so I can draw on the screen. Do, 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 do. Yes, I need that. And I want red and I want it to be about so thick. Cool. That's good. All right, we're back. Cool. Uh, right, part one. Part one is small talk and it's pretty simple. All you have to do really is just elaborate, which means extend the length of your answers. In other words, don't just give short answers to these questions. It's actually a great opportunity to make a good first impression with the IELTS examiner. So what do I mean by that? I mean, when the examiner asks you a dead simple question like, where are you from? Don't just say Nepal or India or the Netherlands. You want to give a little bit more specific information, extend the length of your answers, give some adjectives, maybe some adverbs like this and say something like, well, originally I'm from a small coastal town on the Great Ocean Road, but currently I am living in Melbourne in the big city and it's very different to where I grew up. Boom. 10 seconds and what have I done? I've used a number of different verb tenses, some adjectives, some adverbs. And right from the get go, the examiner's thinking, oh, okay, this person's good. So another one, do you work or study? I study. Boring, you haven't used any verbs, you've used two words and anyone could basically say that sentence. So what you could say is, uh, yes, currently I'm doing my master's degree in applied linguistics from the University of Melbourne. It's quite an interesting course, though I wish sometimes I had more free time. So you're extending a little bit, you're elaborating a little bit, and, 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 and that's that. Let's do it. I just want you to say one sentence. Let's go back to this one here. 
So I'm going to ask you, where are you from? Just in 10 seconds, tell me. So where are you from? Fine, good. And I'm going to ask you this one. Do you work or do you study or do you work? Fine, 10 seconds is all you need there. Right, now what's going to happen is there's going to be a bit of a transition from dead simple small talk questions and all of a sudden the examiner is going to ask you something that, well, it didn't follow on from the previous questions. For example, when I did mine, the examiner looked at me and said, uh, Jay, do you like going to the cinema? I thought, what? Why are you talking about the cinema? That's a weird question to ask, but this is what will happen. So it goes from where are you from and do you work or study to what's your favourite movie, something crazy like that. So same thing, just in 15 seconds, I want you to answer this question. What sort of accommodation, what sort of accommodation do you live in? Five, four, three, two, one. Cool, fine. So for me, I would say, well, interestingly, I've just moved in with my girlfriend into a one bedroom apartment just down near the river in Melbourne. It's not too far from here. It's an old building. Uh, I like it a lot. It's very beautiful. And the good thing is it has cheap rent. Cool, lots of adjectives, lots of verbs, lots of beautiful words, nice sentences. Not too complex though. This is where it starts to get tricky. This is part two and you need to tap, well, the IELTS people call this the long turn and they expect you to speak for two minutes on one topic and that makes it not only hard and nerve wracking, it's almost impossible to talk about a mundane topic like what's your favourite book for two minutes. Can you imagine? That is tough, seriously tough. What most IELTS candidates do, and this is the reason why they don't get good scores, is they choose one story, one book, and they talk about it for about 35 seconds and there's still a minute and a half left and they've run out of ideas. So what they might do is they just tell the same story again and again and again three times. And the best you'll get for that is probably an IELTS 6. If you really want to extend yourself, you need to use a good strategy. This is what we call PPF. Uh, just before I get to PPF, just let me explain what happens here. So what will happen is the examiner will give you a task card, right? Like this. I will hand you a piece of paper and say, I want you to talk for two minutes on this topic here. And you will take the task card and you will look at it. You'll have no idea what it's about. You'll have, then you'll have one minute to prepare. And then you have to talk for up to two minutes on this task card. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. This is what the task card might look like. For example, I hand you something like this. It says, talk about a law you believe is important. You should say, which law it is, why people follow it, whether people break it, and explain why you think it's important. Not easy, right? Not easy. Plus, you're nervous. You're sitting there and you can't think. You're sweating. You're cold. You're thinking, oh, God, what am I going to do? You need a strategy. You absolutely need a strategy. So let's think about this strategy. We call it PPF at E2 Language. What that means is past, present, future. In fact, what you're going to do is tell three stories. You're going to look at this task card and you're going to tell a past story about it. You're also going to tell a present story and you're going to tell a future story. You're going to tell three stories, PPF. This makes it so much easier. But I see a lot of you saying, but it says a law. You're thinking, Jay, what are you doing? You're going to make me fail because that task card says talk about a law, one law. I'm not doing this. I'm going to fail. Well, you're not, and I'll tell you why you're not going to fail. 
This thing here is what is called the IELTS criteria. Let me, why can't I move that? Look, there we go. IELTS criteria or, or, or the band descriptors. This is, this is an IELTS nine. Okay. There are three, sorry, four things. One, two, three, four things that the IELTS examiner listens for while you're speaking. Let's start with number four. This is pronunciation. Fine. That's the clarity of your speech. Number three, this is grammar. This means not just are you accurate, but how much grammar do you have to express what you want to say? Number two, they call lexical resource, but what that really means is just vocabulary. Do you have the words to fit into those grammatical structures? Do you have lots of adjectives? Do you have lots of nouns, lots of verbs? And can you actually put those verbs into the correct tense? Can you use the right prepositions, etc.? There's actually two related to number one. There's first of all, there's coherence, coherence. And that means that you have a well structured, what that really means is structure, a good structure to your story. And there's one here called fluency, which is related, which means basically how smoothly and effortlessly, how easily you can speak. Now, I don't know about you, but there's nothing here. There is nothing here. And these are the same criteria that the examiners use. This is what the examiners use to grade you. There's nothing here about speaking on topic. Nothing about speaking on topic. You are, it's not like the essay. In writing task one and two, if you write off topic, your score will go down. But for speaking, the task card is just a guide. It's just a guide. You do not have to uh, use it exactly. Now, just to prove this, what I did recently was I emailed an IELTS examiner and I asked this person who I'm going to keep secret. I said, excuse me, Mr. IELTS examiner, is it okay if somebody speaks off topic a little bit in their exam? Because I have a fabulous strategy that makes them get higher scores. And this is what he said. He said this. Quote, the speaking questions are not like the writing and being a little tangential, that means going off topic a little bit, is fine. The candidates are marked completely according to the descriptors, these things here, this is how you're marked, and the public version is basically blah, blah, blah. It's the same one that the examiners use. Having said that, if a candidate started talking about their day at the seaside instead or answered every question with a completely different topic, then we might start to judge their vocabulary is what, wide enough, blah, 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 blah. There's always someone who decides to memorise a Hollywood script and then recite it word for word, whatever the question, which might lose them plenty of grammar and accuracy marks as well. Basically, what he's saying is, Telling the three stories is absolutely fine. What's not fine is memorizing something completely different. Because if I ask you to talk about law and you start talking about your favorite food, you're going to lose a lot of points. But if I ask you about law and you tell me three stories instead of one, that is absolutely fine. Cool. Now let's work out how to do it because you get one minute preparation time before you have to speak. And this is really critical time, critical time. All you have to do, look, let me tell you what happened to me actually, <laughs> being the uh, English teacher and IELTS expert that I am, I basically sat there for one minute and lost my mind. I just stared at this task card. I had the pen in my hand and, I just for one minute thought, what the hell am I going to speak about? I wish I used this strategy. I wish I used this strategy. It would have made my life a lot easier. Instead, what I could have done, which would have made it so much easier and so much better, was I could have just written down three words, really, to jog my memory. PPF, the past, present, future. That's what I need to write down on my piece of paper while I prepare. Then... 
under each of these, I need to just remind myself of the story I'm going to tell. So when I look at this task card about a law, well, I, the first thing that came back to me actually was a past story about when I lived in Indonesia and they passed a new law for people to wear motorcycle helmets. Great. So I can, what law is it? Um, why people follow it, whether people break it, and why I think it's important. Great, I've got one. I know that one. A present story. Wow, excellent. Because I recently got a fine from the police about a law that I think is not, well, I don't think it's very cool. It's not a good law. And the future one, well, I had to think of one. And the future law that I'm going to talk about is no helmets for bicycles. Fine. The thing is here with that future law, do I really believe it? No, you also should realize while you're doing IELTS, nobody likes to lie. And I don't think people should lie in society. I think lies are terrible. I think honesty is beautiful. But in IELTS speaking, it doesn't matter. This is outside of normal society. This is you're sitting there with the examiner. You're trying to get a high score. It's a language test. It's not an honesty test. So you can not. You can tell not the truth. You can bend the truth. You can uh, 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 tell white lies. It's absolutely fine. So for the future one, I'm going to tell a bit of a lie. I don't believe it, but I'm going to say it. Now, we need an introductory sentence because it's nice to memorize one sentence so we know how to start our talk well. And you should start like this. Today, I would like to talk about three topics. Well, what are the topics? It depends on your task card. Today, I would like to talk about three laws or three books or three influential people. So you just memorize that phrase. Today, I would like to talk about three, whatever the task card says. Now we're going to move into our past story. I'm going to get you to do this in a minute, by the way. I just want to show you mine first and then you can do yours. So this is my past story. And I look at my notes and I'm going to say this. I said, when I was about 20 years old, I lived in Yogyakarta in Indonesia. It's a wonderful city. Anyway, while I was there, the government brought in a new law that people had to wear helmets on their motorcycles. Prior to that, there was no law against riding a motorcycle without a helmet. It was really interesting witnessing the law change overnight. People followed the law, I think, simply because they didn't want to be fined for riding without a helmet. I don't think that people broke the law after that because it became quite apparent that riding with a helmet on a scooter or motorbike is a lot safer. So I've talked about a law. I've talked about which law it is. I've talked about why people followed it here, uh, whether people broke it here. I didn't talk about that. And why it's important? Well, I actually kind of did I? Yes, here, down here, I talked about that. Why is it good to use three different stories? Well, in English, as you know, verb tenses refer to past, present or future. So one of the main things that you're doing here by talking about a past story, a present story and a future story is that you're using an amazing variety of grammar to tell your stories. Plus, it's just interesting for the examiner. They sit there all day and they're bored out of their brains. And you're going to sit there and say, you know what, examiner? I'm going to tell you three great stories, not just one. One about the past, one about the present, one about the future. And all of these stories will use different verb tenses. And so you're going to think I'm great because my language is brilliant. Let me show you some of these verbs, for example. Uh, when, I, when I was, I lived... Um, while well, I was, um, uh, brought, um, had, uh, was, uh, 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 people followed, um, didn't, there's a negative, fine, uh, there's a present one, that's fine, I can mix present and past, that doesn't matter, but you can see all of these different, all of these past tense verbs and when we move into the present tense story, you're going to see some present tense verbs and in the future story, some future verbs. Present story. Recently, I have been in trouble with the law, with what I think is a terrible law. About a month ago, I was riding my scooter and I had my feet off the pegs. A policeman pulled me over. 
and fined me $233, which I was really annoyed at. I think some laws should not be laws with fines, but just warnings. I don't think that what I was doing was dangerous towards me or anyone else. I understand why most laws exist, but there are some where the police should just warn you and that's that. Paying $200 for a minor infringement is really not the best use of police officers' time, although I understand that they must enforce the law. All of a sudden, I've used these different verbs, have been, think, it's present tense now. Here I've got a few past tense ones, that's fine, I'm telling a little story inside the story, that's okay, but then I'm back to present tense verbs. I don't think, fine, fine, fine. There's a past tense one, that's fine. I understand, present tense. Um, should warn, there's a present tense one. Um, is, so I've gone from was to is. Uh, I understand, so there's my present tense verbs. Cool, right. That's telling a past story and a present story is going to take about, it, it makes it so much easier because you'll use about a minute, a minute and a half of your time, more like a minute and a half. So you're going to have a little bit of time at the end. Usually it'll be less than the past and present story to tell your future story. That's okay. Keep your future story short, that's fine. The future story is important because not only will you use future tense verbs, but you will also use modal verbs and uh, subjunctive, like hypothetical phrases. And this is the grammar that gets you towards the IELTS 9 score. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm still talking about law and I tell a future story. In the future, I would like to see a change in the law so people can ride bicycles without helmets. Bicycles are far less dangerous than motorcycles, so I think helmets should be optional. Should be optional, nice modal verbs. It would be nice to see people ride around Melbourne without helmets like they do in some parts of Europe. It would make riding bicycles far less cumbersome and just all around more enjoyable. And that's about two minutes. And by this stage, the examiner's thinking, okay, great. That's what I want to hear. So again, why IELTS 9? Well, we've seen, we've seen why. Now I want you to try this method and we're going to look at the same task card. So I'm going to give you one minute to prepare and think of three different stories to do with a law. Your one minute preparation time starts now. Just going to check the chat. 40 seconds left. Cool. Thirty seconds left. Think of those three different stories. Take a deep breath and relax. Okay, I want you to look at me. I'm the IELTS examiner. Every 30 seconds, I'm just gonna put up my hand and mention it. But now I want you to tell me three great stories about that prompt card, three different types of verbs or three verb tenses. Your two minutes starts now. That's 30 seconds.
That's one minute. You have one minute left. It's one minute and 30, you have 30 seconds left. Okay, and stop. Even if you hadn't finished, if you're still talking, the IELTS examiner will stop you. This is not a bad thing. It just means you've reached two minutes. Don't think that, that you've done something wrong. It's great that you've reached two minutes. Now, I am guessing that a lot of you finished a lot earlier and you probably finished your first story in about 15 seconds. You need to practice this. If you need help, do go to e2language.com because we want tutorials with expert teachers. If you need some serious help with your speaking, do go to the website, sign up to one of the packages and take some tutorials. We also give you feedback on your speaking through the website, uh, as well as lots of practice material and other strategies. All right, now, one thing you may have noticed that I was doing, I was writing stuff down. I wasn't really, but sometimes the examiners will look at you and they'll do that. What are they writing down? Well, they're referring back to the criteria that we saw before. They're thinking about, while you're speaking, they're thinking, okay, how well structured, how well structured is this person's speech? They're thinking, how fluent is this person? How smoothly are they speaking? Are they hesitating? Are they, hes are they searching for words? Or are the words just appearing immediately? They're also thinking, okay, is this person, does this person have good vocabulary? Are they descriptive? Do they have good adjectives, good nouns, good verbs? And with that, are you using those verb tenses accurately? Not only that, but here's the word range. Are you using past, present and future verbs? As well as prepositions and adverbs and stuff like that. Pronunciation, this is the big one. Are you speaking clearly? Are you, would you be easily understood by me? If you were to speak to me, would your words just immediately make meaning in my brain? Or do I have to sort of think, huh? What was that word? Oh, banana. Oh, I think I know what she's saying. Right. So where, did you speak clearly? Cool. Well done. Um, I probably should have showed you this before you did that, actually. Anyway, let's look at this. Here's how you should start. We, we, we looked at the introductory sentence. Today I, would lock, lock. Today I would like to talk about three laws, three books, three people, three actors, three movies, whatever. There's your introductory sentence. Now, to get you thinking in the past, you use this phrase here. In the past... I lived in Indonesia, or when I was young, I lived in Indonesia, and the laws there were really interesting. Present, currently, recently, right now. This will make you go present tense verb. You want to go present tense verb. Here you want to go past tense verb, and it's this phrase that will make your verbs change. Recently will make you turn into I have present perfect. I have been thinking about right now I am in prison no, I don't know about that future in the future will would so use these little phrases to start your three different stories because they basically make the right verbs appear very clever right cool um, right now you're up to the third section. By this stage, you're feeling pretty good. You've got your talk over and done with. You've told three great stories. The adrenaline's starting to sort of wear off so you can sort of focus a bit more. Now you have to have a philosophical discussion with the examiner. 
This examiner does not want to hear boring ideas. This examiner is going to ask you some questions. And this examiner wants you to give interesting, philosophical, deep answers to these questions. You're going to have to draw upon your own experience of reading and watching movies or your university degree or whatever it is. You need to discuss big ideas. Discuss big ideas, not small ideas, not boring. You want big. So the examiner will now ask you a question related to your task card. So it's going to follow on from law or influential people or whatever it is. So my question is this, what law should apply to all countries? And you have to think on the spot and you just have to answer the content, excuse me, the content of what you say is not so important. Even if you say something really stupid, it's okay. Just stay calm and use good grammar, use good vocabulary. The IELTS examiner won't mark you down for having a silly idea, but you might say something like, I think all horses should never be used in cities. Whatever, something crazy will pop into your mind. Don't be embarrassed. It's not about that. So let me ask you this question, and I want you to speak for about, let's say, 20 seconds, okay? What law should apply to all countries? Do you Okay, that's 20 seconds, fine. So you wanna say something like, listen, I think there are universal laws that should be applied, especially ones that protect children. I think children are the most important things in this world and they're so innocent. And I think it is only law and order that can protect children from things like starvation or abuse or slave labor or something like that. I saw a documentary recently and it was talking about these children working in factories. And I think that is the sort of thing that should be outlawed. That should be banned. There shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to use children in slave labor, whatever. I just made that up by the way. I never saw a documentary about that. It's beside the point. I'm just speaking and trying to engage the examiner. What is the view of lawyers in your country? Okay, and you can stop. Now, if you didn't understand me when I said, what is the view of lawyers in your country? You can say, sorry, can you repeat that please? And what I will do as the examiner, you will not lose points. I will just rephrase the question. I'll say, what do people think of lawyers in your country? So for me, I'd say, oh, lawyers. Well, it's true that lawyers have a bad name probably because they get paid so much money. But to be honest, I think they do a very good thing for society. So it's probably that people are of lawyers' wages rather than thinking that they're actually bad people. Of course, sometimes they charge too much for the types of work that they do. But then again, they do do pro bono work for people who are poor and in need. So I guess the view of lawyers in society is mixed in my country. I'm just free-flowing and thinking about I'm using my knowledge and thoughts that I've had in the past to answer these questions. Cool. That, my friends, is the end of that. I hope that presentation was helpful. If you do need help, do check out the website. Go to e2language.com. We also offer writing help, which is just as good as this, using strategies and uh, structures that work. Um, right now, though, I'm going to go to Q&A. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat. Julia, Jay, could you please give your opinion about what is better, to buy an IELTS book aiming for vocabulary night or to buy a book for general IELTS targeting night? 
Uh, work. IELTS Academic will have a slightly different type of vocabulary, but not really. About two, I'm just guessing, but about 2% of the words will be academic words, more scientific words. You should make sure that you have a good basic vocabulary. Um, that applies to IELTS General. And then if you're doing academic, you should search Google or go to our website for an academic word list uh, that will help you as well. So good question. Devinda, can we discuss three different laws in PPP? Yes, and we did. Remember I talked about the Indonesian law. I talked about my recent fine and run in with the law. Then I talked about a future law of bicycles. So that's, yes, that's what PPP is. Sorry, PPF, three different things, three different stories. Um, if you're on YouTube, by the way, please click like, I would appreciate that. And leave a comment if you don't mind. What if I don't know much about my topic, says Richard? Well, again, you have to talk about the topic. You can talk off topic slightly. So you're just going to have to make do with what you can. Use that one minute preparation time just to think of those three stories, then you're freestyling from there. Devinda, I would like to talk about, okay, that's fine. Prasanna, will there be any deduction in points if I continue and stop me at the two minutes? No, you're not supposed to finish on time. You have no idea how long two minutes is because you're just talking. The IELTS examiner said, Jay, stop there. And you say, okay, no problem. Um, cool. Sumit, how to be more confident in our conversation? Practice, feedback, that's critical. Improve, get good. Um, okay, Russ says, in case I misunderstand the question, is it okay if I answer it? No. If you misunderstand the question, ask the examiner to repeat the question so you can understand it. Don't start answering the question off topic. That's not good. Say, sorry, can you explain that again more clearly, please? And the examiner will explain it to you again. Uh, Dinesh, the embellish and digress method is the same for, actually, I think PPF is better than the digress, but embellishing your stories is fine. That applies to all. Uh, do you think the objects prepare according to which country that I can't understand that the do the exam in it? I think what you're trying to say is, is it the same? Is IELTS speaking the same in all countries? Yes, it's standardized across, across countries. Susan, while talking about part two, shall we speak all three tenses or only speak a single tense? Well, just use whatever tense is appropriate for that thought, okay? So the past, present, future is just a guideline to give you some, use different tenses. But in my present story, for example, I used past tense, that's fine. And in my past story, I used a bit of present tense, that's fine. So it's not strict categories, it's just a guideline for using different tenses. Smitha, Jay, if what I have no clue about the topic at all, da, 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 da. okay, so Smith has asked, if the examiner asks a question like, um, think about where's in your country, what they just said, is it better just to say, sorry, I don't understand you, or just start talking? Just start talking, doesn't matter. Just, it's kind of contradicted what I said before, but, if, if you don't quite understand, ask them to repeat and then talk. But if you ask them to repeat and you still don't understand, then just say anything. Joy, will I lose marks if I do not finish my three stories? Uh, no, but you probably, you won't lose marks, but you probably get better marks if you do fit in that future story at the end. Chandra. If my English level is average, what are the other ways to improve? No, this is a language test. The strategy is helpful, 
but only if you have grammar and vocabulary. There's nothing you can do if your language is not there. This is a language test. That's why you should sign up to eat too and get some help. Start building those fundamental skills. And Praksha, what if we get lost somewhere and forget what question was about? Yeah, you can ask, you can say, sorry, um, can you repeat the question again? That's fine. Uh, Sumit, what should be the expression in the face in front of them? Yeah, and just, if you're nervous, you're nervous. Just to... Here's the thing with anxiety and test taking. People tend to fight anxiety and they tend to anxious. I think wishing that you're not anxious makes the anxiety worse. Accepting that you're anxious and going, you know what? I'm anxious. My hands are shaking a bit. My voice is quivering. Accept it and see it as an exciting thing, not as a terrifying thing. Uh, I learned a good phrase once and it said that courage, courage is the thrilling aspect of fear. Courage is the thrilling aspect of fear. All fear has an exciting part to it. Find the exciting part of the fear. Don't worry if you make mistakes and your hands shake and you, and you whatever. That, that's not what it's about. It, it, it's fine. This is language. It's tough. It's messy. Um, actually, what's the difference between general IELTS and academic IELTS? Is it depending for tougher level? Uh, yes, IELTS academic is slightly more difficult for writing. List and reading, listening and speaking are the same. Feel the fear, says Prasanna, and do it anyway. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Feel the fear, it's good. It's good for you. Makes you think more clearly sometimes. If you accept it, I think it makes you feel more clearly, uh, think more clearly. Anne, is it possible to ask for during the time? No, you can't. Um, I'm just going to check out what's happening on YouTube, by the way. If you're on YouTube still out there, do uh, leave a comment and uh, give a thumbs up. Um, cool. I better leave you guys to it. I better go and prepare for my next webinar. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, I appreciate it. I hope this helped. And uh, do check out the website if you need extra help. Toodaloo.